Um, I very much enjoy the combination of the two genres of um, opera singing and video combined. But I felt that perhaps the piece would have been stronger had it just been him singing. I really do, because I felt like a number of other people have been saying that um, the video and what was being represented in the video, for example, the distraction when he had all the tabloid papers, all, which are very timely at the moment, but I, I just felt it was just too obvious. And had it just been the, his extraordinary operatic singing, I think I would have... Um, I think I would have engaged more with it because I also found that towards the end I was drifting on and off, you know, my concentration. You were being distracted. <laughs> I, uh, like you and like you, my um, initial sense was we're being given the same method, the same message in an almost identical manner over and over and over again. And, um, but I, I have to say with, you know, hearing the discussion, maybe I, I was being asked by the video to look for depth myself a little bit. Um, and uh, one thing that struck me that you guys haven't already mentioned, you guys have mentioned wonderful things, was I found myself thinking about actors and acting. I mean, just at face value, here's a guy lying on the floor eating chips and laughing, and here's the same guy doing this glorious thing. But the guy lying on the floor eating chips and laughing is acting a role at that moment. Um, and he may be, therefore, investing that role that he's acting with as much depth as the role that he's acting when he's singing. But to what effect? <clears throat> I mean, what is the end result of that? Uh, Right, How well, for, for me, that's one of the first places where I find myself saying, oh, okay, I, I, I have actually been challenged to consider something um, that's not just uh, on the surface mm -hmm. of, this, of this video, that's not completely obvious. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm also thinking ahead to the, uh, the people who will see this on YouTube. And I think it's very different to see this here in this space with everybody and with my friends and with people that I just met and possible conversation afterwards. Um, and then seeing it by myself uh, on, a, on a computer screen, that, that's a very different experience of, uh, for me of, of exactly how engaged I am on what, on what, in what registers I'm engaging. Um, and it also brings up to me, the question of um, kinds of performance, like live performance, live audience, but recorded performance, and then finally, like very isolated audience, single single person performance, pre-recorded. Um, I guess the only version we don't have is a live performer with the single person audience. <laughs> um, and. Well, we yeah, well, we do uh, an awful lot of that in the music department. <laughs> um, but uh, I, I, because I've been thinking about this a lot lately, actually, um, and the, the, the way that technology um, intercedes or adds or filters um, our, our experience as, say, like an audience member, so a, a perceiver, um, particularly with, you know, those iPhone apps that show you the constellations that move. Have you ever seen those? Okay, Starwalk. Okay, so I was showing my friend this the other day. I, perhaps this is too long for the thing, but... <laughs> um, and I just couldn't believe that they've come up with this thing on your iPhone, this app, where um, because of the the GPS and the tilt sensitivity, you can hold your phone up and move it across the night sky and it shows you the stars with the names of the stars and the constellation. Okay, so for me this was, and you can like zoom in and see, you know, what is that? Is that a planet? Is that a star? It's moving faster. Why? Oh, it's a satellite. It's I'm like, whoa. And that somebody would think to do that to me. And, and for me, 
were, you know, my state of development is, is, wow, that is great. But a friend of mine who is very suspicious of these devices, who grew, he grew up at, at a time when there was no television, so he's, you know, old school, and, and he's in the theater, really uh, was not interested. He, in fact, in some way, he was almost offended by this device, that it took me out of the moment with the moon, which was beautiful, and into a moment where it, my experience was mediated by this te technological device. Okay, so, so, I mean, obviously, like, as performers, we have this kind of bias towards liveness, and, and I think liveness and, and recreation of humanity right now is a very important topic for human beings um, because we're coming into contact with all this technology. But something like this, it did, um, in, if, if you guys weren't here, I would have had a, a very different experience of it. Like I would have probably not engaged with my humanness, whatever that is, in the same way that I, that I would because you guys are here. I want to talk to the singer for a moment. <laughs> totally irrelevant, probably, to the purpose of the piece. And um, what a wonderful uh, screen presence you are. You're so marvelous to watch. And obviously, wonderful, you're, wonderful. you're a glorious <laughs> singer. Nonetheless, I want to tell you that when you were laughing, your voice had a presence, an immediacy, a focus that was more compelling than the singer, than the singing. Just want to pass that on. Impertinent, I know. I just wanted to go back to something that you said a minute ago. Um, I think you raised some very interesting issues, especially in regards to this particular show. Um, the idea of looking at this particular presentation within the frame of a gallery is completely different, a completely different experience from sitting at home alone and engaging with your computer. So when you're in a gallery, you automatically read this as an artwork. And when you're at home looking at YouTube, you're not necessarily seeing that as an artwork. You're seeing that as a YouTube, somebody just uploading something on YouTube and playing around. And it has a very different feel and um, it raises issues of you know what is what is more important and how do we frame these things so and it's something actually that we've been discussing a lot with relationship to the show because some of the works that we're seeing are you know they feel like they're documentation of artworks other ones feel like they're presentations of new artworks and they're, they're, they have a very different presence like this one for example um, and others, you know, use the space for, for more of a sort of activist presence, so, um, or exploration. So I think, I think that that's something that we're constantly um, being confronted with daily, actually, with this show, which is great. <laughs>